Hey, everyone. How are you? We're going to do something a little bit different here tonight over at the Sanity Machine. You see this guy on the screen? Hold on a second. I'm going to play this just for, just play this a little bit. my life won't be there in the other life and maybe i would live a very that's a that's when i see these live when i get the the what i'm calling parallel lives when i get glimpses into the life where i'm, I'm a hockey player and i'm a comedian and i'm i'm this and i'm that um those lives are the lives where my personal divine spark wasn't in this particular body that i know of as me my divine spark was in a different body the, the me itself is not really that much different, but the, the me in that other life won't live that much different a life than this one other than this introspective ability of trying to understand self and the universe and creation and death probably is missing or is going to be at, at a either there's a particular level or there's a particular depth that it won't go. So it's also, again, when people are trying to say that, oh, you're, 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 trying to get people to elevate themselves over the others, th this is a very important point, is that in the next, in another life of this, another equivalent life of this realm, where we're all here together at the same time, the one that I'm trying to label as an NPC now, that's the one that's got the divine spark. I would be the NPC in that life. Does that make sense? No, that really doesn't make sense to me, Howdy. I'm sorry, it doesn't. And I have some questions about you, to be honest. Not just because you keep posing with the books behind you all the time. But man, why do you look so angry? You got that furrowed brow, that angry stare. And you froze on this. This is a still frame. You were making a video. And this is what you chose to put. So this isn't my choice, people. I didn't, uh, my people, my people. <laughs> My people, you know, I didn't uh, choose this. He did. This, this is what he chose. So he's got that angry stare and that furrowed brow. What are you so angry about, man? Look at the eyes. He does have some angry eyes. Now, I know some people are fans of Howdy. They're going to say, hey, he speaks some truth. Sanity Machine, he speaks some truth. You should go over there. Some people are directing me over there as though I don't have my own views on my own mind. I have seen some of his stuff now. You know, not because you directed me over there yesterday or whatever, but, you know, I have been kind of looking into him a little bit here and there, but I still don't know a lot about him compared to many others on YouTube, but I have some questions. Is that okay, truthers? Can I question things? Can I question people a little bit? Is, do I have your stamp of approval for that? Because a lot of you don't do that. You're in this trap of you don't question anybody that you follow. Some people have said to me, how do you know this about Jason? And they say they don't research the people they follow. Well, some of us do full background checks on some of these uh, liars on here. You know, what I, you know what I'm saying? Like we try, to, we try to look into the felons. We don't just follow the felons club or a little bit. We're hip to that kind of stuff. We don't just follow along with the violent criminals that have been in in maximum security prison for almost 30 years and pled guilty. Jason, not Howdy. But I haven't looked into Howdy. Howdy Doody. He looks angry. What are you so angry about, Howdy? Just because you're in Hell Realm? Can't you laugh and smile a little bit? I don't know, man. There's something about this guy. And some people will say, hey, he tells some truth. Well, Jesus Christ, Hillary Clinton's capable of telling some truth. Bill Clinton, Obama, whoever, take your pick. Corn Pop, President Corn Pop. Broken fucking clock tells the truth a couple times a day, doesn't it? I think so. Might even tell 80% truth. I might even give him credit. I might give him the benefit of the doubt or, or be generous. Not benefit of the doubt, sorry. I might even be generous and say he he might tell up to 80% of the truth. See, that's the thing, though. If you ter tell certain things that are untrue, just like Chiron last, he might tell you some truth. But uh, if you get recycled back here, what the fuck does it matter if he told you some truth? See what I'm saying? It's the end result that really matters, right? 
you agree? Do some of you agree and see that? Maybe, you know, I'm I'm being silly a bit in this video. I'm I I I, I got to be honest. I'm kind of in a silly mood tonight for some reason. But I looked into a hundred different truth topics. Let's say a hundred, and I mean looked deeply and spent lots and lots of hours on each one, not just on one. A hundred different rabbit holes or a hundred different truth topics, whatever way you want to put it. And let's say a lot of them turned out to be legit, where I wasn't duped, and I learned a lot about how this realm works, how whatever works here, and I learned about a lot about things that the general masses don't know about. Follow along with me just for a second, okay? Under different things. I've got them basically down pat to the point that I could probably, you know, as Matt McKinley always says, take a podium, quote, take a podium and debate someone. And I could debate the best in the world, let's say, hypothetically. I'm not saying I can do this hypothetically in this scenario. I'm so good that I can I could debate anybody in the world on these hundred topics, which is great. That's fantastic. Somebody would say, you know so much. And some people would be praising me just like a guru, which I don't want. But that would happen. And they'd be like, damn, you have so much knowledge and you know this stuff inside and out. But let's say on the one thing that really matters, like the reincarnation soul trap, I had done zero research or barely scratched the surface, just, you know, five, ten minutes. But I spent hours and weeks and months and years on these other topics. What's the problem? Let's say I pass away that night after the debate in my sleep, okay? hypothetically, and notice I'm not using anyone else because I don't want to talk about so anyone else passing away. I'll use myself as the example. I pass away in my sleep. If that were the case, I'd basically be done and wasted my time spending years doing deep research on those hundred topics. Because if I know nothing about how the soul trap works, it works and don't even know about it, and really don't see that, yeah, this is a reincarnation soul trap system. Chances are, I'm just going to be duped in death. Done. So all that knowledge is wiped clean. And you're starting from scratch. You're starting from scratch in a way I don't know most people can conceive. Because it's not like starting a game from scratch. Because you can still remember the past game. If we play chess and somebody says, game over, you won, and wipes everything off the board... And then somebody says, let's play again, though. You start over. Your memory of that first game's not gone. You still have it. Even though you're setting up the pieces all over again, you're starting over. It's not really starting from scratch, is it? Just like video games, you retain your memory. You learned. If somebody shuts off the game and says, fuck this, you're playing too long, and shuts it off and you're not done, you still remember how you played, what worked. You learn things, and your memory's not wiped. So this memory wipe is the most destructive thing. And it's the thing, it's what matters the most. Because you lose all of your knowledge from everything else. All right? If you get this wrong. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm not trying to worry you. I'm just trying to express the importance of getting this right. Even if you don't get the other shit here right. So long as you see that, hey, this realm is a realm of suffering by design. It's evil. It's ruled by evil. So whatever, quote, God there is, it's allowing evil to rule here. So how good is that God? See what I'm saying? Some people would say, well, the God that's allowing this isn't the real true creator. It's not the real one. This is an evil demiurge. This is Yaldaboath or whatever. You know, all this stuff. You could, you could use 100,000 different names. I don't care what you call it. doesn't matter. You can look up a list on the internet of gods and evil entities and demiurges and, you know, devils. There's hundreds of thousands of names. And people get hung up on the name of it. Who cares? I don't care what you call it. I don't care what you call it. I don't care what John Lamb, Lamb, you know, <laughs> that's fitting, Lash, calls it. He's just rehashing Gnostic shit that's, you know, centuries old. 
go read, buy, or look, you can find for free, really, on Google, a lot of the books that he's just quoting from and reading from and rehashing. You can find it. It's easy to find. So much is at your fingertips these days. But my main point is, there's tons of topics that in the end, when you're leaving your body, you're not going to be saying, you know what, it's so crucial if I know that big Mike Obama is not the gender that is portrayed. Is it kind of interesting? Is it curious at first, that kind of topic here? Sure, it is. A lot of us went through that stage of looking through it. Is it going to help you escape the soul trap? I don't see how. I mean, I'm still kind of semi-open to the idea that maybe it, it could somehow, but I don't see how. Are you going to do a transvestigation on the, on the evil demiurge that you face? <laughs> I mean, what, and then, even then, what does it matter at the time? If you're saying, look at the hips, look at the narrow shoulders, the shoulder slope, the skull shape, is, uh, the skull size, the shape, the forehead slope. I'm aware of all this, okay? People that come on my channel and think, hey, you don't know anything about this. No, I do. I went through that years ago, okay? It's not new to me. And you, you're puzzled why I'm not focusing on it. Because I'm focusing on helping people get the fuck out of here that don't want to do this again. That's why. Point blank. To put it very bluntly. I'm focused on trying to help people get the fuck out of here before I pass away. I'm trying to help as many as I can. And I don't think doing transvestigations is going to help them. Do I think it's a truth topic in this realm? Yeah, I do. Do I think it's the most important one? No, I don't. No, I don't. And do I think flat earthers that are stuck on one topic since 2015 or so when Eric Dubay started posting videos? I mean, we're going on eight years or so now. You're still obsessed and fixated on one topic? That's not going to help you get out of here. Do I believe that water find its le finds its level and that the oceans are flat and the horizon's flat and that it's not a spinning globe model? It's not flying through space and there aren't upside down people in Australia? Yeah, I think the globe model is completely fake. It's bullshit. Spinning plastic toy is what I call it. It's bullshit. But do I believe that's crucial to getting out of here and not getting recycled or born again, as I sometimes call it, which has meaning, a double meaning, okay? I don't think flat earth is going to save you. In fact, I see a lot of flat earthers going towards the fake, quote, God and saying because it's written in the Bible and the firmament and stuff that God is good. But they're not looking at the realm. They're missing the realm, if you see what I'm saying. They're looking at the flatness of the horizon and stuff and all the proofs. I've, I've gone through DeBay's proofs, you know, long ago. I think I looked into that in 2015, but I felt that it was that way since childhood. I did my own experiments in childhood as like a seven-year-old, I'm not kidding you on this, okay? When it comes to gravity, um, the spin, the rotation, stuff like that, I didn't buy it. I was one of the ones that didn't ever quite buy it, always had questions, and, and it didn't add up to me. Did I call myself a flat earther as a kid? No, I didn't. Did I buy the spinning plastic toy model that they showed us? No. No, or gravity, but especially the spinning motion. I could never buy that. I always knew I was a stationary. All right, so there you go on that. Mandela effect. That's also very interesting. I can go into a lot of topics on my channel, and some people probably wonder, why aren't you going into all this stuff? Why aren't you covering every Mandela effect change that you notice? or that you've experienced and that you're aware of, and the huge ones, the big ones, the important ones. Maybe I have my reasons. Maybe I see certain things as more important. Maybe you should consider that. Maybe what I'm catering or tailoring my channel towards is trying to help you get the fuck out of here and choose freedom. 
do I think a lot of this stuff is is interesting? Yeah, even fascinating. Absolutely. I mean, the Mandela effect hit me hard when I did when I came across that. In, I think it was 2015. Yeah, it was 2015. It was both flat Earth videos and Mandela effect in that era. I was into that stuff big time back then. Not gonna lie about that. I was into other things too. I was never just a one topic or or two topic. I was always into many things, looking into many many things. Do I think that's a clue about this realm? Yeah, I do. Do I think that's the way out? No, I don't. No, I don't. I think there's a lot of people that see the Mandela effect changes, including the Bible changes. I think there's a lot of people that see flat earth. They see that they've been lied to about space and the globe model and NASA and Hubble and all the image, fake space images and everything else. And some of them even saw the hundreds of memes that I made on Facebook years ago over the years. And I'm talking about hundreds trying to expose this stuff. Mandela effect memes and flat earth and many other memes on Freemasons and all kinds of topics. I was a meme making machine instead of a video making machine. I was making memes, JPEGs, okay? Tons of truth memes, tons, just tons on Facebook and getting banned all the time on there. 30 day bans on many, many accounts. I would have six, 10, 12 more, or more accounts going at once. So yeah, I was trying to, I was trying to put out a lot of truth on there for years. So anybody that, I know you don't mean it in a wrong way now, but at first when I set up my channel and people started saying you came out of nowhere, you don't know who I am or what I've done or what kind of truth I tried to put out there before having a YouTube channel, which I never wanted, all right? I wasn't really interested in it for the fact that I really don't feel comfortable being on video. I've never liked it since childhood. I've never liked it. So then people would tell me on Facebook, you got to set up for years, you got to set up your own YouTube channel, try to push me in that direction or, you know, heard it many times. So why did I eventually set up a YouTube channel? Because maybe it's my suspicious nature. Do you still have Howdy on your screen with his angry staring face? You find that the least bit strange? I do. I wonder. Again, do I think he's telling some truth? Yeah, he's telling a lot of truth, actually. I'll go that far and agree with his fans. And you are fans. Some are fans, definitely. They love the guy and stuff like that. I see the fanboys and fangirls of Howdy on his various interviews and on his channel, the comments. It's easy to see. Do I think there's something a bit off and odd about him? Yeah, I do. I really do. Does my intuition usually work pretty well? Yeah, it does. Is it sad sometimes to discover that, hey, there might be something off with this one? Or a lot of them? A lot of content creators on YouTube? It's not just him. Believe me, I could just put them on all night long. I have my questions about Howdy, all right? I really do. And I uh, hate to laugh about it, but it's just like, how can I put it? There's so many quote truthers with zero questions about these people. It's like you're part of being a truth seeker, not a truther, but I, I prefer the truth seeker for the real ones, the authentic ones. Part of it is questioning things, not just following blindly, not accusing people. Notice I haven't accused him of anything. I haven't said, I think he's this, I think he's in this club. I'm not doing that. I'm noticing things, I'm observing, but I'm not just condemning him or making false accusations or accusations that may be true, but I don't have all the evidence to back it up, or I just, you know, I'm not there yet in terms of, hey, he's this. I'm convinced. I'm not convinced. But I do definitely have some questions and red flags, for sure. All right? I'm not going to hide that at all. And some people, I, I already know the way you react. 
you know, you just say you're just jealous because he sells books or, you know, he, he's this or that or, you know. That's a cognitive bias. What it is. People can get emotionally attached to these YouTubers very quickly and they'll defend them, you know. Do I have questions about Howdy? Yeah, I do. And that's why I'm, one of the reasons why I'm making this video which is ending up to be longer than what I thought it was going to be, but uh, that's the way my videos go once I start talking and start making a video on something or someone. But this is not just about Howdy. I just have his face left up on the screen, and the more you look at it, the more you can really get a sense of, sense of who he is, perhaps, rather than just the emotion in that second. There's something about him. But does that mean that he's telling a complete lie and that there is no soul trap and there is no memory wipe and that, that he's telling lies about his experiences, his, his life? No. No, it doesn't. As far as I'm willing to go at this point is, I think there's something unusual about Howdy. And that you might be a little bit cautious. I'm not telling you not to watch his videos or his channel or his interviews on other channels, whether it's Jeff Mara's or not Jeff Mara, but do they call it the Jeff Mara podcast? I don't know what his last name is. It's Jeff and Mara, but it's Jeff Mara podcast. So whether you've seen that interview on there, which I thought he did quite well for the most part. I mean, I didn't analyze it. I didn't even watch the whole thing. I watched quite a bit of it though, but I had to do something else. But uh, Jeff's questions were, he was pretty hard questioning Howdy compared to the Galactic Ambassadors and stuff like that. that he, just, he doesn't question at all on his channel. But um, that was unusual. That was very interesting. But um, yeah, I just have some questions about Howdy and his energy. Do I seem angry sometimes in my videos? I bet I do. I bet some stuff does piss me off here in this realm. Evil pisses me off. Suffering, that's needless suffering. The suffering of innocence, the suffering of children, born and the unborn in the womb. Okay, there's suffering there too in this realm. That pisses me off. Evil pisses me off. That we're in this evil place of, of that's ruled by evil and, and full of liars and, you know, frauds and deceivers and just it's sickening and the abuse the abusers here are sickening they're just disgusting so yeah that that does get me worked up i'm going to be honest about that i'll never say that doesn't it does it really does and i'm not one of these emotionally detached types that's just my personality type i think i could probably do medication or not medication, meditation for the next 10, 20 years if I live that long, which is pretty doubtful. But if I live that long, and it's, it wouldn't take away that anger for evil. That's who I am. That's just, that's just probably hardwired into me, coded into me, like personality types seem to be in this realm. So that's not going to go away. Even with meditation or medication, I mean, they could medicate me on antipsychotics or the strongest whatever, painkillers or something. And I might be laughing and smiling, but if you mention evil and suffering here, I probably could start to get pissed off even though I've, you know, they just injected me with uh, muscle relaxants or something, Demerol or something like that, or they gave me fentanyl or, what, or whatever patch where I'm just you know, higher than a fucking kite. I'd probably still be pissed off about that. That's just who I am. you know. I want to destroy that. I want to destroy this evil system. All right. And I'm weird. I'll admit to that. Most people, when they smoke weed or they get so stoned, they just get happy about everything. And I can be happy and funny or, you know, laughing and just, you know, making jokes when I'm on whatever. But I can still get angry on weed. I'm telling you, it's that there's something about me that has this righteous rage in me. Almost like I grew up watching the show on TV, um, it was 
The Incredible Hulk. It wasn't just called The Hulk with Lou Ferrigno as an actor. And he was painted green as the Hulk. It wasn't cartoon. It was, you know, him as a real person playing the Hulk. And the Hulk would get pissed off over injustice and something wrong. And, and he would, you know, uh, what's his name? David Banner was, I guess, was the guy's name, the scientist, would change into the Hulk. But it would always be over something that pissed him off, some un injustice or something that was really bad or really wrong or someone was being hurt or something. And it was like, you don't want to make me angry. You won't like me when I'm anger angry. And uh, I loved that show as a kid. I would, I would take off my shirt as a kid. And I wasn't like a bodybuilder, but I would flex my muscles and, you know, play the Hulk and stuff. And... Um, yeah, I would just run around the house doing that. And uh, I think there's always been that part of me. I don't like injustice. I don't like evil. I don't like all the lies and the deceptions and the suffering of this realm and the whole design of this realm. I don't like it. I know that it's wrong. It's bad. It's immoral. It's unjust. It's terrible full of disease, it's full of suffering. Does that mean every person is suffering every second of every day? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Some people just breeze and glide through life. They have it easy. They really do. They never go hungry. They've never starved for days or a week, never been cold, not been able to afford heat in the wintertime and have to wear multiple pairs, uh, pairs of clothing and like three pairs of warm socks and bundle up under layers of blankets and stuff like that. Never had to do that. Never been abused in childhood. Been threatened, psychologically abused, physically abused. Never been locked up somewhere. Abandoned, betrayed by someone, by family members. You know, had calls made against them and hauled away, taken away, stuff like that. They've never had to go through a lot of things. Never been tr totally devastated by grief. They've never even lost their parents. For example, they live into their 50s, let's say. Certain YouTubers, both their parents are alive. Neither of them were abusive. Like they've lived kind of sheltered lives in many ways. Some people have it a lot worse. And some people have it a lot worse than I do. I'm the first to admit to that. I'm not saying I had it the worst. I'm not crying. I'm not being a snowflake. I'm not saying, oh, boo-hoo, poor me. Nope, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying I observe the suffering in this realm of others. And there's people that have told me things. I'll never divulge who or what they said. It's all confidential. But they've said things that were horrendous suffering that hurts my heart, literally hurts it to think about what happened to them and how wrong it was and it's not their fault there's a lot of things in this realm that are not your fault whoever's listening to this that's been abused that's in pain that's been given these diseases hereditary or you know genetic disorders or born with it or you know all of a sudden you develop something and it's not your fault it's nothing that you did wrong it's not your fault that pains my heart. It's heartbreaking to me. And it does get to me. It really does. Part of it makes me sad. And part of it makes me angry. It makes me pissed off that this place is this way. And it's trapping people here. Good spirits that don't deserve all of this hell. I, I don't think this is... When I say hell, sometimes people get the wrong... interpret. They, they interpret that wrong, get the wrong idea... Or, the, you know, the, it has a connotation that, oh, hell's for people that are bad or bad people are sent there. No, this isn't a place of punishment. This isn't purgatory or hell. I call it a hell realm due to the suffering. I don't imply that we deserve this or that we're being punished for something that we did in a, in a past life. No, not at all. I don't believe that at all. At all. At all. I can't even emphasize that enough. No, I don't. I don't believe that at all. I've met some souls here that were so beautiful and so pure that I can't even imagine them in a, in a past life. 
doing something harmful or, or deserving any of this realm, any of it. All right? So this, I don't view this place as punishment for us. There's a lot of theories that I'm going to have to get into and say why I don't subscribe to them whatsoever. And it's going to be a series of videos because, I mean, it, it, it's, uh, you can't just cover it all in one, one video that's half an hour or an hour long. And I don't like doing, I don't want to do two, three hour long videos. I just don't. It's just fucking too draining, too tiring. It's like I get emotional and then I'm just drained afterwards. I'm just like, it gets to me. And it's not anyone forcing me to do it or anyone riling me up or just discussing it, just getting into it, going deep into it. It just, it really does. It, it just, it's like, it drains, it doesn't just drain my energy. It's hard to explain, but some of this stuff is just fucking difficult. Like it's, uh, it's difficult to deal with. It's, it's, it's almost like faith, facing a death and grieving in a way. It's just, it's hard. It really is hard. So anyway, I'm doing my best. I really am trying my best. And whether you believe me or not, I know some people here can tell, though, on my channel, by your comments, you can tell that I'm just doing this trying to help people. That's what I'm doing. And, and part of my motivation was seeing just the, quote, truth community degrade to the point of making me nauseous. Like it was just getting disgusting seeing all these shills, frauds, controlled opposition, liars, gatekeepers, just... It's, 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 uh, I don't, I, it's disgusting. That's all I can call it. I don't even know what to call it. It's just bad. It's so bad. It really is. Because they're misleading so many. And how can I put it? What I visualize them doing is trapping people here where people are getting closer and closer to the way out of here. They're really, they really want to seek the truth. And they're getting trapped in these fucking pens by these evil deceivers. And it just makes me sick. Like it almost makes, it was basically on the verge of making me literally sick to my stomach. Where I was like, I have to do something about this. And I, and I realized that I'm not the greatest speaker. I'm much better at, at the written word than the spoken word. I prefer writing whether it's essays or poetries or manifestos. And yeah, I have written manifestos. That might sound crazy, but that's something that was done long before the Uni Unabomber and those, those kinds of manifestos came along that became famous in the mainstream. Okay, there's a long history of, of that in literature. And I'm, I'm into literature. That's what I've been into for a long time. Even though I hardly read books anymore, I have, a, I have collected a lot of books, I used to be, read books all the time. Every night I would be reading. And now I just am so busy with this other stuff that whether it's making videos or my artwork and everything else that I have to do in life that I literally just don't have time. And it's just, I, I don't know. I, do, I don't have the energy either. I mean, it's just uh, just the way it is. So I, sometimes I make videos like, like a madman. Like I'm, some people would probably accuse me of being manic which is fine. I don't care what you think of me. You can say I'm schizophrenic or manic or crazy or insane or like Chiron last was saying, you know, saying insanity and madness are bad and this and that. And, you know, he doesn't have a fucking clue. Doesn't have a clue. The best poets and the best artists and the best philosophers and the best minds to ever walk this earth were madmen, period. As far as I'm concerned. No contest. It's not even close. It's not even close. If you want passion in poetry, then you look to the madmen, the mad poets. That's the way it is. If you want to read mad poetry written on the walls of an asylum or a psych ward, you know, that makes people whether they're patients or staff members, nurses, doctors, psychiatrists, patients with all sorts of disorders, varying degrees. They could be in there for, you know, their thoughts. I can't go into what thoughts, but women have said to me, postpartum depression, that type of thing, to bipolar disorder, ones on lithium, to 
schizophrenics to you name it, it runs the whole spectrum to construction workers coming in to renovate the place and stopping and reading, reading the poetry out loud and saying it's beautiful and that this should not be destroyed. It should be left there. They don't want to take that temporary drywall down or paint over the wall, that the, a real wall that it was written on in pen, ink. They don't want to destroy it. They think it should be, it's worthy of being preserved and read. That's what I'm into. That's what madness is to me. You don't, some of these people don't have a fucking clue when they attack such things, when they attack such beautiful things. They talk about the sacred. What the fuck would he know about the sacred? He's just a follower of bullshit. He's a cult follower of Christianity trying to play a guru on YouTube. What the fuck would he know about madness and beauty and poetry and artwork? He doesn't make any. Now he's making, Chiron is making these blank videos with a black screen. Because he got made fun of, he got he got, it was pointed out, all these slides that people are, think are so awesome. He's just downloading them off fucking you, off uh, Google Images. None of that shit was his for years. So what? He can download some images, images and put a slideshow together. I can do that too. I make slideshows, but for the most part, it's almost always my own creations. So take it for what you want. If you think, oh, he's just comparing himself to him. No, I exposed Chiron as a fraud where he had to make a video addressing me without naming me. But that's what it was. I could tell. All right? Putting down madness. What the fuck would he know about madness? Madness is more beautiful and pure than all of the sick sanity that people go by in this world. Who taught you what sanity is? Your masters, your rulers, the same ones that call you humans and persons personas, human animals. That's what they call you. People accept whatever their rulers call them in this realm. Oh, sanity's good. I don't want to lose my sanity. I want to be sanitized. Yeah, you sanitize something with fucking chemicals under your sink in, in uh, plastic bottles usually, like toilet cleaner, toilet bowl cleaner. They have a skull and crossbones and it says poison on it. That's how you sanitize something. You use poison on it. That's what they do to you as beings. They want you sanitized. They want you poisoned by sanity. That's what sanity is. It's a, scour it's a scourge. It's all the word, world's plague. That's what I call sanity. People are trying so hard to be sane. You just want to be clones of everyone else. You want to be conformists. That's what sanity looks like to me, conformity. All right? That's what it looks like to me. That's what it looks like to me. You want to be unique. You want to be authentic. You want to be an individual. You want to be creative. You want to be your own being. Then choose madness and choose freedom. Don't follow along with this sickening sanity. Do you know what sanity looks like to me? It looks like going out in public during the scandemic. And seeing a million fucking people with covered faces with masks on. And I'm the only one standing around for as, for as far as I could see. And this happened to me that wasn't wearing a mask. I'm the madman. All right? And I understand that. I call myself that. And they're sane. And they're following along with whatever shit that they're told. That's what your sanity looks like to me. Mask conformity and masked conformity, face masked. That's what it looks like. Sanity looks hideous to me. So please, don't ever try to insult me if you care about me and respect me and my content here. Don't ever call me sane, because that'll make me so mad, I'll almost feel like spitting, venom. I can't stand that. I'd never want to be considered sane. When I pass away and you hear that word of my, quote, death, celebrate and say he's free. Just assume that he got free, basically. Assume that I won't give up until I'm free. If I have to fight them to get free, I'm going to be free. And celebrate and say something like, or think to yourself, you know, that was the maddest fucking person, or, the, or not person, that was the maddest spirit or the maddest artist. You know, I'll live as an artist and I'll die as an artist. 
Think of me as an artist, a mad artist. That would be honoring me and my work and my life here to be known as the maddest artist that you ever knew or that you could maybe even that you could ever imagine, hopefully. Hopefully you can't even imagine an, an artist that was madder than I am. That's what I want. You think to yourself, maybe, raise a glass, drink something, drink to me and drink cheers or toast or something and say, there wasn't a fucking drop of sanity in him. And there wasn't just a spark of madness. He was the entire madhouse on fire, burning to the ground. <laughs> That's what he was just madder than a hatter. You know, the emperor of the mad. That's what some people have called me, the emperor of the mad. There's a line in one of my, one of my pieces of writing. If you are mad, you are mine. For only sanity can I despise with any ill rejection. And I do reject this world's sanity, just like I reject its slavery. And that's what it is. Sanity is basically slavery. It's mental slavery. Free yourself from that shit. The straitjacket of sanity off of yourself for your own sake, not for my sake. Help yourself, man or woman, or, you know, 300 other genders, or what, whatever, you, whatever gender you want to call yourself. I can't even keep up these days. But whatever, whatever you are, it doesn't even matter what your gender you are. That doesn't matter to me at all, at all. It's irrelevant. Get the straitjacket of sanity off of you. Get those chains, those mental chains and those spiritual chains off of you. Break free from that. Please do it. Whatever it takes you to do that, and I mean that, whatever it takes, as long as you're not harming someone else, that's, the, that's basically the only stipulation. And, and don't harm yourself doing it either. Please, don't harm yourself and don't harm others. But, you know, except for those stipulations, do whatever it takes to free yourself from those mental chains and those spiritual chains on you. Please, I want you to want freedom for yourself as much as I want freedom for you. When I look at this realm and I see so many spirits and chains, I can't even describe what that makes me feel and how much I end up thinking about that later on. I don't go out that much in public anymore. I'll go on walks and stuff and, stay, and avoid people and avoid crowds avoid going into places. I don't even go into supermarkets. I have to be honest. I don't. I order my groceries. I order stuff to be delivered. And, you know, I'll meet the person at the door that's delivering, and that's it. It's like, you know, I don't go into these places. And I didn't want to do it anymore after I saw it. Like, I already knew that the masses were zombies before the scandemic, before all the masks and all the lies, everything, right? I, I was aware of it a long time ago. I was saying that the masses were full of zombies in the 1990s. People that knew me back then would nod their heads and agree, say, yeah, he was. He really was. He was calling them that then. I could see it then. I could see the zombies, the conformity, and uh, the mind control. I was writing about mind control in my zine that I published in the 1990s. And I was writing about Big Brother and spying, and I had read Orwell's 1984 multiple times. I had read... Aldous Huxley's complete works, including his published uh, collection of essays, you know, non-fictional works. I had read all of it. I had, you know, I, I study this stuff. I, I study what they're showing us. I, I study, I try to study uh, writers. I study artists, uh, visual artists. I study geniuses. I, I've st I studied a lot of things on my journey, all right? And I realize there's people on my channel that study things too. I'm not saying that you don't. I'm just revealing people have been asking me and you know it's not pressure i just feel like okay now is now is the time that i will kind of get a little bit more just a little bit more into my personal journey i have studied a lot of things and i do believe that if you study genius and you study masterful artists painters um 
whatever, whatever the case may be. It could be painters, it could be sculptors, whoever, right? And, and writers, genius writers, genius poets, um, study the arts in general. And if you do that long enough, and you basically love it enough, love it strongly enough, you basically sleep with it, which is what I would do. I would fall asleep qu quite often in those days with two or three books in bed with me that I was reading. And I would be reading one and, and then start reading another one, go all, all over the place. That's what my mind does. And I don't think that's a defect. I just view that as a gift. Not a gift from, quote, God, but uh, some kind of gift, basically. But anyway, that's how my mind works. I'm not normal, all right? And I'm glad I'm not normal. And if you're not normal and you're listening to this, embrace it. Please embrace that. Don't let them put you down for it in this world because it's a gift. They've just reversed it on you and just tried to make you believe that, hey, you're, you're uh, defective or you're a freak or you're this or that. They'll call you all sorts of names. It's what they do. That's what zombies do. That's what envious zombies do. All right? But anyway... I think if you fall asleep, you sleep with genius long enough, you dream about it, you study it, you love it, you're going to start to have some of that seep into you. Some of that genius is going to seep into your dreams and into your consciousness and into your art. I really do. And that's what I did many, many years ago, decades ago. That's what I did. I studied all sorts of other things. I studied hacking. I studied what's now known as coding, which used to be programming computers in assembly language back in those days. Which is a, it's a pretty advanced language. It's, a, it's not that easy. I'm not boasting, but I mean, it's not that easy to just teach yourself how to do that without going to school, taking courses, um, even buying any books on it. But that's the way I like learning. Self-taught. Do it yourself, man. The old punk ethos. Punk rockers know what I'm talking about. DIY. Do it yourself. Do it yourself. You want to learn how to draw? Do it yourself. You want to learn how to pay, paint, or paint or play guitar? Do it yourself. Be independent. I think that's good. I think that's a good way to be. I think that's going to help you too. Get out of here. Because you're not going to be relying on anyone else. When you're out of your body. You're just going to be like, no matter what comes, I'm going to be able to do it myself. I'm independent. You know? I can think on the fly. I can adapt to situations. I can do this. You're going to be confident. That's what I want. Just like I said in another video, I want you to be warriors so that evil is running away from you. Do I think that's possible? Yeah, I do. I really do. I think, that's, I think that is a possibility that you can make yourself so strong into such a warrior that evil's going to run away from you. How about that? Do you hear anyone else saying that in the quote soul trap community? Or do you hear a lot of fear mongering push, a lot of gaslighting, a lot of you chose this and you know, you consented and you know, you should just run away and, and uh, go into a void and uh, hide for eternity and all this shit, all this cowardly shit. You won't hear me preaching that shit. Anyway, this video has gone on pretty long. <laughs> I was planning on making, I'm not even kidding here. I was planning on doing like an eight or 10 minute long video on good old Howdy and Howdy's angry face and his furrowed brow and, you know, his angry look on his face and he's staring at you with this angry look and he, he uh, froze it on that. He paused it on that. It's like a still frame from a video. It's not even a picture. And he chose that look to leave it on. It's just, it's kind of odd. I was planning on doing maybe eight minutes or something on that, maybe a 10 minute or less video. 
That's what the plan was. Or I'll do Yon Levi's. That's what the plan was, my people. But the controllers, the controllers just led me down a rabbit hole, a deep, dark, glorious, glorious glory hole. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I was planning on making this a relatively short video. And here we are at, like, I don't know, 50 minutes or something. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I'm silly that way. I'm spontaneous that way. Sometimes 10 minutes can turn into that. And I'll just roll with it, you know. I'll just go with it. So I've been leaning. Uh, i got to be honest here, people. <laughs> I've been leaning on my fucking elbow for like this whole time basically and I think my arm is falling asleep so I am going to end this video and I am kind of silly and uh, you know that sense of humor is part of madness I'm not sane I've never claimed to be sane and sane people tend not to have much of a sense of humor and they're just stale and just bo not boring but I don't know how to describe them not much personality to them so Anyway, I think I'm going to end this video and just oh, just maybe get a little bit sleepy. I'll talk you to sleep in my video and get you to get you to yawn a little bit with yawn Levi's. Oh, my people, my goodness, my goodness. So I love you all, people. I, lo I love you all. I love you all. And I hope you have a good night. And I really do hope you take some of what I said here to heart, and just think it over. I'm not expecting you to just watch this and hear my voice and nod your head through the whole thing and agree. Like, ponder what I said. I encourage that, okay? I encourage that. And uh, I'm sorry that you had to look at how Howdy's, not Howie, Howdy's angry face with his furrowed brow throughout this whole video. I almost feel bad for that, for leaving that on the screen. I probably should have put something else on there, because that's... That's quite an angry, angry stare that he has up there. So, anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end this here. And uh, it's not even late, but I was up all night last night, and I'm sleepy. So I'm gonna end this here and have a good night, everyone. Bye.